Hulkamania is good. All my Hulkamaniacs running wild. What's going on? We're back booking another episode of GSW, The Road to Global. If you didn't watch last week's episode, I suggest you go back and watch. Crazy episode. Long story short, Canyon is out of here. Canyon got fired last week. But on his way out, he did manage to injure Rey Mysterio. Did manage to take out Jess Ventura. So first things first. Obviously, we're not going to replace the champion, but first things first this week, what we're going to do is we're going to have to look for an on-air personality to take over in Jesse Ventura's place and maybe another color commentator because we don't want to keep doing, you know, we've always had Jesse on color and he was the boss. So when he'd be in an angle, he'd have to leave and then, you know, we wouldn't have anyone on color. So what we're going to do this week, first things first, we're going to get a brand new color commentator in Jesse's absence and we're going to have to get an on-screen personality to, uh, you know, run the day-to-day -day operations in Jesse's absence. So we're going to do something with that. All right, let's hit uh, filter. Let's go to... We need a personality first. So let's go personality to hire. Make sure he's available to work in the U.S. And let's see what we got. Doesn't leave a lot of options. Well, from looking at this list, one name definitely pops out to me. And no, it's not Eric Bischoff. I'd rather not have Eric Bischoff in the company. Uh, let's see if uh, Billy Graham will work for us. I'd love to have Billy Graham. Um, exclusively a personality. Let's see if we can get this down a little bit. You know what? We've got him on a three-year contract right now. Let's only go. Let's go one year. See how he does. We'll put him on a one-year contract. And what was his offer, he said? Downside's too low. So let's pump up that downside. Still too low. Wow. All right. So he wants 1310 No problem. We got him exclusively as a personality. And we've got our offer into Billy Graham. All right, now that we've got an on-air personality to take place as, uh, you know, I guess you can say something like the GM because he's running day-to-day -day operations right now. Let's go for a color commentator. Take a look at color commentators available in the U.S. We got Bruno San Martino. What's, uh, what's Bruno's color? 91 color commentating. Can we get Bruno? Bruno work for us. All right. So let's hire Bruno as a color commentator. I've always been a fan of having um, ex wrestlers or especially ex world champions as a color commentator because you know you have your announcer, maybe two announcers, but it's always nice to have someone on the announce team who's actually been in the ring, can maybe call it a little better, maybe knows the psychology that's going on to make the commentary better. You know what I mean? Downside's too low. All right, let's pump that up a little bit. 1830, we got that. All right, we'll put that offer into Bruno. And now we'll start simming ahead, and we'll get to those contract offers and accept them, and then we'll start heading towards GSW Final Judgment. We got a multi-event stop. Let's see what's going on. Let's check the old email. Lance Storm's contract's ending. Definitely don't want to lose Lance Storm, so let's renew that contract. Lance Storm's at 468 right now. So let's see if we can get him maybe 600. Let's see if he'll go for that. Downside's too low. Pump that up to 500, and he wants 670. Yeah, we could, we could do 670 for Lance Storm. Puts out good numbers. All right, we've got another stop. Let's check the email. Super Kendo's contract's ending. We've got a few contracts coming up. All right, let's uh, definitely, definitely re-sign Super Kendo. Super Kendo's up to 1,200. One thousand one hundred and thirty. Yeah, we could do that. All right, this should be the stop for our contracts here. Yep, we got Billy Graham. Sign Superstar, resign Lance, and then we're just waiting on contract negotiations with Bruno San Martino and Super Kendo. Keep moving ahead. All right, we got another stop. This is probably going to be our last stop. Uh, Diesel's gone from GSW. 
Diesel had his time here. We gave him an opportunity. Unfortunately, just not between not putting out the numbers we need and being gone so long on tour, we just don't need him. If we were doing a popularity company, him going out on tour and getting more popularity would definitely be helping us a lot more. But since we're more performance based, it's not really helping too much. So we're just going to wish Diesel good luck in his future endeavors. And we're going to move on. Let's delete those emails. Okay. Finish up Bruno. And we're just waiting on Super Kendo. So we might have one more stop. Let's take a look. We got Super Kendo's contract. We got Super Kendo signed up now. And we're nine days away from Final Judgment. We're just going to sim ahead right to the show. Uh, if any important emails pop up, you know, of course I'll put it on screen. But otherwise, if it's, you know, something minor, it's not really pertaining to the main show. I'm just going to skip right ahead to Final Judgment. But before we go simming ahead, let's definitely assign positions here. Do a little auto push. Get our announce team. Jess Ventura is not going to be on the announce team for now. Let's take him out. Put Bruno in there. There we go. Just make sure that's saved. Yep. All right, we got Bruno on the roster. Let's make sure it stuck Billy Grandma's personality. Okay. So we had another stop right before the show. Just wanted to pop this up and show you guys. We had Lou Albano extending his deal with ECW. Ray Lloyd, aka Glacier, extends his deal with CWA. And then we have Duke the Dumpster Drozzy leaving GSW. Another guy we've had for a long time. Had him on the roster. Pulled decent numbers. But you know what? At this point, I feel like we can move on without Duke. He served his purpose. Best of luck in your future endeavors, Duke to Dumpster Drozzy. All right, we're at the night of the show. If I remember correctly, the last show was in New York, so we're going to be heading back to New England, I'm pretty sure. Let's just take a look at that history and double check. I was right, last week we were at the Tri-State, so this week we will be in New England. Let's pick New England, let's pick our best venue. It's got us going into uh, Lead Arena. Let's take a look and see what the seating is in Lead. All right, so we're expecting 1,886 fans, and Lead Arena holds 2,100. Not bad. So if we do get a, an influx of fans that we weren't expecting, we'll have the seating for them. That's a good thing. With that said, let's get to the show, boys. We're at GSW Final Judgment, Thursday, week three, October 1993. Let's start the show, boys. So starting off the show, we have New Age Outlaws versus the Pitbulls. In a pre-show match that at subpar wrestling in Little Heat, the Pitbulls beat the New Age Outlaws in 433 when Durante beats Road Dog by pinfall to aided Super Bomb. I don't think we've seen the Pitbulls win a match here in a long, long time, so it's nice to see the Pitbulls back on track. Maybe winning some matches in the future. We'll see what happens. Billy Gunn had a 29. Road Dog had a 31. Gary Wolf had a 35. And Durante had a 41. Road Dog's improving his performance skills. Then up next in our next pre-show match, we have Bill Mulkey versus Disco Glenn. In a poor pre-show match, Bill Mulkey beats Disco Glenn in 10 minutes and 1 seconds by pinfall. Bill Mulkey had a 42. Disco Glenn had a 36. Then I'm next, starting off the main show, we have Billy Graham coming down to the ring. And he basically just lets the fans know what happened last week and that due to Canyon's actions, Jesse Ventura and Rey Mysterio are going to be away from GSW for an undisclosed amount of time. We're not sure yet. Medical reports haven't fully come back. They're still being looked at. But as of right now, Billy Graham will be taking over the day-to-day -day actions that Jesse Ventura was doing. He's going to be running the company from now on. He's basically going to be the GM uh, replace them in color commentary. We have Bruno San Martino. You know, we have Bruno San Martino over by the announcer desk stand up, wave hi to the crowd, everything, get back to announcing. And basically, what Billy Graham just says here is right now, we're not going to strip Rey Mysterio of the title. We don't know, like I said, we don't know how long he's going to be gone. But as of right now, we're not going to strip him of the title. We're going to wait to see how long he's going to be out. And then we'll keep you guys updated and we'll move from there on what we're going to do with the title situation. But as of right now, Rey Mysterio is still the champion. We had Billy Graham debuting his Rockstar gimmick. Got average. Not, not bad. Not good. Not bad. 
He improvised well, though, and I mean, the rating did get uh, an A, so that's pretty good. Got us off to a strong start for sure. Up next, we have Edge versus Curryman versus Hector Garza versus Jerry Lynn in a fatal four way. In a match that had decent wrestling but little heat, Jerry Lynn beats Curryman, Hector Garza, and Edge in 6 12 when Jerry Lynn beats Edge by submission with the cross arm breaker. During the match, we had Edge take a stump bump, Curryman, and Hector Garza. It's a little bit of chaos in this match. Edge had a 48, Curryman had a 53, Hector Garza had a 43, and Jerry Lynn had a 47. The match also got the crowd buzzing. Hector Garza is also improving his rumble skills. Then after that, we have Alex Wright versus Yuji Nagata in a match at decent wrestling and not much heat. Yuji Nagata beats Alex Wright in 9-10 by pinfall with the Exploder. Alex Wright had a 54 and Yuji Nagata had a 47. Then up next, we have Too Cool versus Candido 420. In a match that had decent wrestling and not much heat, Too Cool beats Candido 420 in 11:46 when Brian Christopher beats Chris Candido by pinfall at the fast roll-up. Uh, the fans are starting to get bored <laughs> by the hints of Missy Hyatt's heel turn. <laughs> Missy Hyatt's still waiting for that turn. One of these days, we're going to get around to that. Don't you worry about it, boys. Scott Taylor had a 48. Brian Christopher had a 58. Rob Van Dam had a 52. Chris Candido had a 61. I'm still laughing over that turn. We've been we've had that Missy Hyatt turn going for I don't even know how long it's been. Chris Candido is improving his performance skills. Then after the match, of course, we have Brian Christopher, Scott Taylor, and Rikishi Fatu. Too cool. Of course they're going to come into the ring and do the classic, classic Too Cool dance spot. But before they get to start dancing, we have Rob Van Dam and Chris Candido in the ring, and they're pushing each other back and forth, and they're screaming in each other's face. And, uh, you know, Too Cool just kind of looks at them like, Oh, shit, what's happening here? So they kind of back off. We're not going to have the dance segment tonight. Then up next, we have Al Snow and Raven settling the score once and for all. We have Al Snow versus Raven in a first blood match. In a decent match, Raven beats Al Snow in 10:52 when Al Snow gets busted open. Raven makes defense number one of the GSW Tri-State title. Al Snow had a 60, Raven had a 56, and Raven is improving his performance skills. After that, we have the Low Supers versus Fatality rematch. In a match that had good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, Fatality beats Low Supers in 1248 when Taz beats Super Kendo by submission with a Taz mission. Fatality makes defense number one of the GSW Tag Team Championship titles. Paul Ellering did good work at ringside. Taz and Blackman have excellent chemistry, as always. Kendo had a 58, Callow had a 59, Steve Blackman had a 64, and Taz had a 65. Decent numbers coming from uh, all the participants here. Then up next in another rematch, we have Chris Jericho versus Kaz Hayashi for the GSW National Championship. In a match that good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, Kaz Hayashi beats Chris Jericho in 1258 when Chris Jericho gets himself intentionally counted out. Chris Jericho had a 70 and Kaz Hayashi had a 58. After the match, we have Chris Jericho grabbing a microphone. He tells Kaz, I'm going to do you a little favor and help you out, Kaz. I'm going to tell you why you lost the national championship and why you didn't win it back tonight. You may have won the match, but I'm still the champion because there's more than one way to hold on to the title. You know why you lost, Kaz Hayashi? You want to know why? Because you're a dummy. You're an idiot. And Brains beats Braun every time. Up next, we have Terrorizing versus Glacier versus Flash Funk. In a match that had good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, Flash Funk beats Terrorizing and Glacier in 1446 when Flash Funk beats Terrorizing by pinfall to Tumbleweed. Flash Funk's gimmick is getting stale, so after this we're going to have to tweak that. Terrorizing had a 61, Glacier had a 58, and Flash Funk had a 61. Then for our main event, we have my favorite match, the trios match. We have DDP, Cactus Jack, and Perry Saturn versus Owen Hart, Midnight Mike, and Juventud Guerrera. In a match that had good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd, DDP, Cactus Jack, and Perry Saturn beat Owen Hart, Midnight Mike, and Hooven 2 Guerrera in 21-20 when DDP beats Hoovy with a diamond cutter. Perry Saturn had a 59, Cactus Jack had a 57, DDP had a 64, Hoovy had a 51, Midnight Mike had a 58, and Owen Hart had a 73. And we have Cactus Jack improving his rumble skills. 
Good rated match overall, B minus. All together is pretty decent show. We got a C plus 71. Pretty good score. Let's give DDP and Midnight Mike some encouragement. And Owen Hart. After the show, I see we have a uh, headline here for Kaz Hayashi on the radio. Kaz is on the radio, threw up an interesting tidbit when he revealed he enjoys working against people smaller than himself, feeling that it complements his style perfectly. So we got Kaz on the radio, getting uh, GSW's name out there. That's always a good thing. Let's check our email. Final Judgment had a TV rating of 0.15. Not too bad. Of course, now that the show's over, let's take a look at our size. 66 in the tri-state, no change there, working towards going to 67. Nothing much has changed in size. And before I check, I already know that the economy and the wrestling industry are still falling. It's going to turn around one of these days, boys. It's a crazy time right now in GSW, boys. Jesse Ventura's gone. Rey Mysterio's gone. Canyon's not around. What's going to happen? I have no goddamn idea. You guys are going to have to stick around and make sure you're here for the next episode of GSW Road to Global.